Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, thrill-packed episodes in the lives of those stalwart sons and daughters of Western destiny. No name is more exalted in history than John M. Bozeman, who charted a new and shorter lifeline for those early pioneers from the Middle West to the gold fields of Montana. To this route he gave his name, and so the famous Bozeman Trail came into being. All along the route were forts, sturdy custodians of the destinies of farmers, trappers, or miners. Two of the most important forts in the chain along the Bozeman Trail were Forts Phil Kearney and Fort Laramie. As our story opens, the hero who steps into our drama is not John Bozeman, but John Portigee Phillips. The scene is Fort Phil Kearney, the time December 21st, 1866. A messenger has just brought the horrible news that an expedition of 81 men sent out against the greatest menace to emigrants along the Bozeman Trail has been wiped out. Come into my quarters. I don't want to alarm the women and children. They're dead. Dead, I tell you. Massacre. Here, man, get hold of yourself. Sorry, sir. But those bloodthirsty savages, those red devils, led us into a trap. And suddenly, from out of nowhere, they came yelling and shooting. Lieutenant Grumman was killed, so Captain Fetterman asked me to bring... Ride them. for reinforcements? No, sir. He knew they were done for... He had me ride and warn you that Red Cloud and his warriors plan to march on the fort. We've only got 119 left now. That includes civilian employees. Oh, poor Captain Fetterman. I'll officially note your report, Corporal. Yes, sir. God rest the souls of those brave men and their captain. Now, get some rest, Corporal. By sundown, Fort Phil Kearney must be ready for Red Cloud's attack. <laughs> that ushered in the wild ride of the messenger warning the fort brought snow. The thermometer continued to fall. A terrible blizzard swept down from the Bighorn Mountains, bringing huge drifts of blinding snow which swirled and piled high about the log stockade. The snowfall was so heavy that it was necessary to keep a force of men shoveling it away as it formed against the walls of the fort. If it piled too high, the Indians might climb the log barricade. Every light in the fort was kept burning. Hourly, the situation at the fort became more desperate. Colonel Carrington summoned John Portigee Phillips, a frontiersman and the employee of the quartermaster. John, you've been on this frontier years longer than I have. What do you think Red Cloud and his warriors will do? Well, Colonel, now that the thermometer hit 25 degrees below zero, I reckon he hold off 24 hours or so. Uh, perhaps 48 hours, three days at the most. Colonel Carrington... How many miles do you reckon it is to Fort Laramie? Oh, I'd say roughly between 220 and 236 miles. Uh, around 236 is right. Well, help from that source is out of the question. No man can survive a ride with the thermometer 25 below zero 
If only he was a mile out, the Redskins would get him. Yeah, thank you, Phillips. I'm going to talk to Mrs. Grumman, Colonel. I hear her husband was killed and massacred. When I come back, I might have a plan you'll be interested in. on talking, but everybody here like your husband. Thank you, John. He was brave soldier and gentleman. Uh, I kind of figure it was too bad he had to go instead of me. Don't say that. No one knows when his time will come. Lieutenant Grumman had to go that way. Uh, he was sure powerful kind to me. You been too. I was born in Portugal. They call me Portuguese Philip. Didn't make him treat me less than a man. You have the respect and the affection of every man, woman, and child in this fort. Well, I ain't never done much to show my appreciation. But fate has just shoved an opportunity my way. Maybe in half hour I'll be on my way to... John, you can't mean that you... Well, if Colonel Carrington give me leave, in half hour I'll be on my way to get help from Fort Laramie. John, the cards are all stacked against you on a proposition like this. You haven't even one chance in a million. But if Indian attack the fort, you can't hold out. Why, I'm gone or anyway. Besides, I don't think I'm going to lose. It's a brave, reckless thing you're suggesting, Phillips. But I, I can't let you ride to certain death. Colonel, it ain't just lives in this fort. If Red Cloud wipes out this post here, every station for 500 miles will fall to him. And it's the forts that keep the Bozeman Trail open the year round. And the trail keeps the West open. There's logic in that. If you only had one chance in a thousand... Mm. The chances, Colonel, are mine to take. I'm all packed and ready to go. I can make lot of me even in this weather in little over three days. This is midnight of the 21st. I should be at Fort Laramie by, by Christmas night. All right, John. Go. And God bless you. <laughs> Thanks, Colonel. I'm traveling mighty light. Just enough feed for myself and your horse. Huh? Uh, now, now, don't say no, Colonel. I've got to have that mare of yours. <laughs> All right, John. Anything in the fort, yours. Now, how are you going to keep the wind out? Well, I got buffalo skin overcoat, buffalo boots, gauntlets, and cap. By the time you get your dispatches writ, I'd be ready to leave by the Sallyport Gate. Phillips, we never meet again on this earth. I'll know you went to a hero's grave. Colonel Carrington. At midnight on the eventful day of December 21st, John Phillips started out on his ride. Every person who witnessed his departure into the storm whispered Godspeed to the man who was attempting to outride death over a snow-filled trail 236 miles long. By day, he hid in the thickets, and when darkness fell over the Bozeman Trail, John Phillips galloped away into the direction of Fort Laramie. December 22nd passed into December 23rd. The cold became more intense. The biscuits, John Phillips' only food, became fewer. The horse, more winded, but on they rode, on and on. The day of the 24th of December saw horse and messenger again in hiding. But nightfall found a brave man and a brave horse riding into the darkness. On the morning of the 25th, Christmas Day, the telegraph operator at Horseshoe Station, Rollins, Wyoming, saw a bearded man riding a spent, stumbling horse. At his heels, a band of Indians. Open up that gate there! Get your guns, men! A messenger with Redskins in the end! Got line through to Fort Reno or Laramie? Line's all down. Got something important to put on them and when the wires get hot again? Yeah. 
81 men of garrison at Fort Phil Carney, massacre. You've been riding all this way from Fort Carney? Yeah. Men, help this man down from his horse. Get him some food and get his horse a bag of oats. Uh, no, no, can't stop to eat. Just put some more biscuit into my pockets and slip that feed bag on my horse's nose. I was just traveling at night, but got to make better time. Uh, thanks. Thanks, all of you. Well, if I have luck, I'll get to Fort Laramie by midnight. On through the bitter cold of that historic Christmas day rode the messenger and his faithful horse. A few hours and they were riding past Fort Reno. Night again. Eight o'clock. Icicles trailed the beard of John Phillips, and his coat was covered inches thick with snow. The mare began to whinny with pain, but her stout heart and unerring sense of duty drove her on hours past her strength. Nine o'clock. Ten o'clock. The mare stiffened. On, girl. On. No, no, you, you can't stop now. On. Oh, don't let me down, girl. You're the colonel's horse, ain't you? Come on, come on, girl. Show some of that spunk and fire. Just one hour more. One hour and we'd be at Fort Laramie. Come on, come on. We got to make Fort Laramie, girl. We got to. Oh, God bless you, girl. You understand. That last hour to Fort Laramie was an eternity. About 11 o'clock, just when a brilliant Christmas party was at its height. Into the officers' clubhouse, where all the dances were held, staggered a swaying gigantic figure, swathed in a buffalo skin overcoat, with buffalo boots, gauntlet, and cap. I'm courier from Fort Phil Kearney. Important dispatch for commanding officer. Uh, take care of my horse. Fort Kearney? Why, that's 236 miles away. Great guns, it's a wonder it didn't kill him. His horse, sir, is dead. He's pretty close to death himself. Let's get him to a bed. Corporal, run for the surgeon. Yes, sir. Send reinforcements. Two companies, cavalry, and four companies, infantry, well armed. Women and children at mercy of 3,000 bloodthirsty Sioux. 81 killed. 81 killed. We'll avenge those 81. In the morning, we'll take up the march for Fort Phil Kearney. If we save that fort, it will be because this man got through. He deserves a medal for his heroism. He may never get that, Captain. But he will have the everlasting gratitude of those people at Fort Phil Kearney. And the respect and admiration of every soldier in the West guarding the Bozeman Trail. Thanks to the daring, the courage, the invincible will of one man and his brave horse, Fort Phil Kearney was saved. And the Bozeman Trail kept open to those pioneers of the late 60s and the early 70s. And so, John Portigee Phillips joins the great parade of deathless frontier fighters. Mm-hmm.